Well, I'm Hamid from Iran. I've made a statue of my hero. Well, my hero doesn't exist. But this statue is a mixture of some heroes. Uh, and he's gonna change the way the world is going on. He's gonna, I mean, a <coughs> powerful person to just change the people's life. His hat representing Che Guevara's hat because he has to be brave enough to change the world. His bird is uh, inspired by uh, <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci because he should be intelligent enough to make decisions. He has a green head because he had to. He have to think green to, pres to pre preserve the earth. He wears in white, like Martin Luther King, because he's looking for peace, not war. And he has a big and powerful foot, inspired by Stephen Hawking. He was a paralyzed guy, but he went far beyond the borders of science. So it can represent him, because he has to go far distances than our own beliefs and our own borders. And this is the hero of mine. Hi, I'm Yad. I'm from Brazil. I have men and heroes, but today I'd like to speak about uh, Galileo Galilei, who was Italian. He was a math, a polymath, uh, actually. And uh, he was the guy who realized the sun was the center of the universe. And the time that he discovered this, um, that was not uh, accepted by the church, who is the power at uh, that time. And he had a lot of problems about it. Uh, he was accused by the Inquisition and he, he was almost killed by the church because um, when they say the, the sun was the center of the universe, he was uh, removing the power from the church. So the scientific uh, stuff um, could grow and the church was really trying to stop him. And he is a hero because I think I face this kind of challenge in my society right now. I work for the government of uh, Sao Paulo state and sometimes when you are dealing with the date so close you realize uh, many things, social things, environmental things and it's really common people doesn't want to listen because they have to change the structure to deal with. So I, I get inspired by Galileo to find a strategy and partners and how is the best way to speak about my feelings and, and try to change the things and the world for the better. That's why he's my hero. Thank you. My name is Wahid Yaya. I'm from Ghana. My hero here is Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan, in that I grew up as a growing up as a child, see him as in quotes, you know, a black person among whites, you know, spearheading the global goals like the UN, you know, compact. Seven as a UN Secretary General was something that I was really happy about and. Uh, and also coming from nobody, he's from Ghana, he wasn't anybody, the background where he's coming from, I'm also coming from that level. So I cherish him for that. And seven as a secretary general, he was, also, he was able to contribute in his, you know, uh, the global goals, for instance, he was able to launch the UN uh, Compact in 2007. And so he inspired me that Coming from, you know, a living a low background, you can always become whoever you want to be. And I wish to be like him, so that one day I also continue to, you know, uh, champion the cause of the conflicts and the water problems in in, in the whole of uh, Ghana and the world at large. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Agathe, I'm from uh, France and uh, so uh, I choose as a heroine, heroine uh, Simone de Beauvoir, so she's a French uh, philosopher 
um, and um, first what she said is that um, we are all born in uh, this uh, world uh, that we don't know this world, we don't know why we are on this world, but um, uh, we need to find our way on this earth uh, to know, to have a meaning of uh, life. So that's why um, I put uh, like, it's like a kind of uh, earth. And then uh, this ex ex interrogative mark, <laughs> I don't know what to say, uh, to say what, wh why we are on earth and we all need to find that. She was also a um, uh, feminist. And she f uh, fought, uh, so yeah, she was there um, in France to um, do a lot of action uh, and revolutionary action in uh, in France during the 20th century. So to access uh, yeah, the right of voting, and uh, also she fought for abortion, so that we could have uh, the women, all women, could have abortion. So she was really an activist. So that's why there is also the, if you can recognize a, a fist like. Okay, that's it. <laughs>
135 million cubic meters and it covers an irrigable area of more than 25,000 acres. Even in the present, we respect a lot to King Parakram Bahu. King Parakram Bahu is the iconic figure in our present day irrigation department. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Tandin Sring from Bhutan. So today I'll be talking on uh, our fourth king. So he's the younger, uh, this picture, in this picture, so I've drawn him in the younger version of our fourth king, though as of now he's almost uh, 63, 64 years old. So I've drawn it. So <clears throat> why we refer to as him as an idol or like, uh, I mean, like uh, inspiration from him. So he was a king when he was just uh, 16 or 17 years old. So he, he became the one of the youngest I mean, monarch in the world. Then like, <clears throat> and he did uh, very much to be done from like starting from education, agriculture, and bringing lots of development. <clears throat> and he's also one of the founder of uh, GNH, Gross National Happiness. So he coined that term. So in Bhutan, instead of gross national product, we use uh, gross national happiness. So which counts like the development, I mean, philosophy of Bhutan is uh, GNH. And uh, to uh, give some examples of his sacrifices and all, like uh, when he was just uh, 51 years old, he, I mean, he left the throne and give, uh, give this throne to his son. So when he, uh, son was around 30 years old and all, so like he made uh, many sacrifices, not for only his royal family, but to the people like giving a democracy in 2008 and all. So from these like his act activities or his, I mean, his work so we get uh, I mean like uh, the youth in Bhutan get lots of inspiration from him like uh, so that's why we refer to him as one of the I mean like uh, inspiration from him yeah okay hello my name is Lucia I am from Guatemala and um, they asked me to talk about my hero and I am inspired by three women that are really powerful and they are um, uh, fighting against um, uh, inequality in my country. So the first is uh, um, Rigoberta Menchu that won a Nobel Prize of Peace because uh, she was a woman that uh, took uh, against inequality in our country. Then is a politician that is named uh, Tel Maldana and she's working with the, together with the United Nations and she, uh, she has put in jail a lot of uh, politics that are really corrupt, corrupt, uh, corrupted and, and there's the other woman that is an artist that gives us uh, the hope uh, in our country even of all what we are going through. So. Uh, here I represent peace, hope, equality, happiness, uh, fighting against corruption, and these are all our three women um, in a non-development country, and sh they are my my heroes and who inspired me. My name is Ruth, and my late mom is my hero. She was the only breadwinner in the home and she used to make, she used to sell Maasai carvings. I'm from Kenya and we have the Maasai culture and she used to sell the carvings. This is a, a Maasai warrior holding a shield and a spear and they have their big earrings and their morans who usually plate their hair at the center here and uh, they also have another thing that uh, it's, uh, it's around the thread one. Huh? They, they, that is how the Maasai warriors go to war and that is what my mom who was very literate used to sell to the whites and uh, one thing that really surprised me she managed to know the English language and that's how she used to converse with the whites so she managed to sell them she also used to sell the African pots and uh, this one is for making some mains and uh, we have these are the the necklaces that she used to sell and this they call it a mask this is what she used to sell in order for uh, for to earn a living and that is how she educated me and she has given me the energy to go all through to work hard though she's late but she still inspires me despite being illiterate i said that she has given me the energy and i'll make sure that i acquire more education just for her thank you Okay.
Hello, my name is Maria, I'm from Brazil and I chose my one of my professors in the university that's called Professor Jumar and he was the, the first professor that told us about uh, going out university and making extension programs with people who needed more than uh, only staying in the university and the labs so he had a hat like this one so always I, when I think about him I remember of his hat that he always had in his, in his car and he always was ready to go in the field, in the sun to talk to people and also um, know the real problems so with him I started the project about uh, water supply and also sanitation, that's why I did this and uh, I went to a project in Northeast Brazil and I, I had a lot of uh, that I was in inspired in his work and in what he's done with the community so yeah, he, he inspires me a lot so. There was this person who, ins who inspires me is my teacher at uh, ordinary level. He was my English teacher. The is the is the person who told me at that time that um, he believed I had a lot of potential in in me. And uh, sometimes when I'm about to give up, his his words they they push me every time. And uh, he's the guy who told me that I was going to come up with an A in English, which I did. Uh, and I think it was because of him that um, I keep moving every time. And um, I think that there is no method, there is no particular process that I believe I'm going to take. But I think that there are some words that people have said into my life that are going to push me. And uh, especially on those moments that I'm about to give up, if I remember those words, I get renewed, I get more energy and I will move on. You can start. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sabita and I'm from Nepal. And talking about my hero, the first thing that came in my mind was my mom. And she loves to wear this big tikka you know, for it. And she loves very bright color. And this is traditional red sari that is used in Nepal. And she really loves bright color. So when I think of her, then the energy comes within from me. And about uh, studying in, uh, about how she inspires me, like, it's like she have, she, back to her period, she couldn't go to school, so she always inspired us to be, to get educated and to go abroad, because she has been always been bounded in her, in her home, and when everybody in our house complains, uh, but she, she stays calm and she cares us and about water from my child from since our childhood we have, my parents and my dad too had taught us to reuse the water and to separate the organic waste and, and make compost of it so uh, in a way they have been a big inspiration for me and my mom is my hero thank you hi i'm Abura Banda from Malam. i take dr william Cantus as my hero the one who has inspired me most, he doesn't just sit and watch things happen. He makes things happen. He's involved in research trying to solve problems um, uh, in the water sector, in the agriculture, in the energy sector, you name it. Um, this makes him one of the most known engineers and doctors in Malawi. So I would like to be like him one day. Sure. Okay. Hello everyone. Um, my hero, I am first one, and that is the one closest to my heart, is my mom. She is a nurse. More specifically, she's a midwife. She gives life to people. She helps women give birth to life into the world. And I respect her for that. She's the reason that I am here. She's the reason that I am this kind of a woman that I am. She inspires me because she managed to raise us, me and my sister and my brother, as a single mom after my, my father died. And it has been a struggle, a really hard one, but she made it and here I am. I'm so inspired to be like her. I know I have the strength to do it. Thank you, mom, for everything. <laughs> Hi, 
The second person that gives me strength, that, that I draw inspiration from, is Maya Angeli. She was a famous American poet. She wrote this poem called Still I Rise. No matter what people throw at you, the shade, the hate, the negativity, nothing can put you down. But like dust, still you can rise. You can do it. You can do whatever you put your mind to. And I draw inspiration also from, the, from your famous saying that I've learned that people can forget what you did. People can forget what you said, but they will never ever forget what you, what you made them feel. I'm here to inspire people. I want to make people feel feared. I am pursuing a land and water development for food security. I want to make people fall. I want to make people to have enough food and they will believe in themselves. Thank you. <laughs> I'm portraying my uh, hero as this uh, classical Ghazal singer from Pakistan, particularly famous in subcontinent called uh, Mehdi Hassan Khan. And uh, he has been allowed into music, especially classical uh, music as a vocalist. And uh, I'm greatly impressed from him by uh, his uh, musical tracks and his compositions and uh, his lyrics that he has composed. Plus, uh, I like to sing a lot, so I practice uh, uh, doing musical sessions and performing at various events and concerts, particularly his ghazals and his songs. Thank you so much. Basically, I'm Genga from Kenya. My hero is my father. In front of me, you are not seeing my father, but I'm seeing an animal that my father used to own that showed us very many things. While I still consider my father as a hero, I refer to the animal that he used to keep at a tender age of seven, uh, seven years. This animal that was owned by my father used to wake up, wake us up in the morning. It used to follow us all the way up to the gate when you are going to school. And when you are coming back from school, it used to receive us from the gate, bring us back home to the house. One of the things that this animal stopped us from doing is to go fishing. The animal was against fishing. And wherever we tried to go fishing, it could stop us from the rear gate. But funny enough, it was interesting that it was always following us to go to school. And therefore, it means to us a lot that it was encouraging us to go to school. And from that kind of encouragement, we've seen that it was better to go to school than go fishing. So I still remember this animal for encouraging all our, 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 our brothers and sisters to go to school. And therefore, up to now, we are seeing the fruits of going to school. That was an encouragement from this animal. And we thank the animal very much. Thank you very much.